Hello and welcome to the Arbitration Conversation. So in this episode, we're going to talk about one of our partners. Um, you may have noticed on the blog on arbitrate.com that often we repost um, things from Arbitration Matters, which is a fantastic website in Canada. And with us today, we have Lisa Monroe. And Lisa Monroe has taken over that website, Arbitration Matters. Not only that, but she's a very experienced and talented lawyer and arbitrator. She's a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators and has achieved the qualified arbitrator status in Canada. Um, she's been very involved in the community there in Toronto where she practices law, and she is a partner as well at her law firm at Learners LLC. So first of all, I just wanted to thank you, Lisa, for taking time there and um, talking to us and for letting us partner with you um, with Arbitration Matters. My, pl my pleasure. I'm actually quite excited about taking this on, although it's rather daunting because of the success that uh, the former um, editor, uh, who's now Justice, Daniel Urbes. Um, he started th this, this website and, and so far up until the last few weeks has contributed all of the content, which is very impressive and also very intimidating for his yeah. successor. That is intimidating. Yeah, he is. And he's someone who's so passionate about arbitration and, and just really cares about it, which is just, I love that spirit behind Arbitration Matters. So now it's in your hands. So, so maybe you first want to just tell us um, what is the website and what's, you know, what's it about? What's the purpose? So the website is called Arbitration Matters and you can find it at www.arbitrationmatters.com. Nice and simple. And what it is essentially is a summary of key cases across the country um, in Canada which uh, summarize those cases as they come out and are released by our courts on a, on a regular basis. And they get distributed to a list of subscribers who, who request uh, to, be, uh, to receive these emails, usually about five at a time. And so what we do is we, we keep our eyes open for the release of interesting cases and then send them out periodically, usually about once every two weeks or so, to subscribers. And one of the things that's been quite gratifying to me is that having taken this over from Justice Urbis, I've actually had um, only a few opt-outs. In other words, most of the people who have subscribed to the work that he did are interested in continuing on with me as editor um, and my very um, experienced contributors, who I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and so what, what, the, what the website does and what the emails with the case summaries do is provide a little headline. So subscribers will get an email with a kind of a headline for each of the cases that we're, we're covering. And it gives you a sense without having to scroll down on your phone, am I interested in reading more about this case? And it's essentially the one sentence summary of what we think is really interesting about the case. And if you're intrigued, you can click on it. And then there's usually a one paragraph summary. And then if you want to read more, you can you can see an entire case summary. And it's got the case citation and that sort of thing. So, so it's really a fast and easy way to get up to date. You don't have to read the entire case summary, um, but you can get a, a sense of what the case is about just from the headline and, and the 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 one paragraph summary. So it's designed to be digestible, bite-sized for people who don't want to spend, we all get inundated with stuff in our emails. And so this is designed to be useful to people. And I think that the formula that Justice Urbis um, started is a winning one because we have people emailing and saying, I want to be, I want to receive this on a regular basis, both counsel and arbitrators. So that's why it's exciting for me. There's already, a, there's already an established readership and there's already a brand and people are interested in it because they think it's useful to their practices. And I know that before I started in this role, I was reading the, the blog every, every uh, week or two and founding, finding it was, very helpful. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love get, because it is really digestible. It's so easy to right away find, oh, this is something I want to learn about. The other thing I love is how you kind of break out the different jurisdictions, mm -hmm. um, makes it very easy to follow where the case is coming from. 
Yeah, and I think that there are some issues that are of interest even to, you know, our U.S. colleagues. Mm -hmm. So so one of the interesting things I think about Canada is that we have all our arbitration legislation is provincial. So and, and the legislation is not identical, although it's quite close. Um, certainly on the domestic side, and we all have, each province has an international statute as well, and we're a model law jurisdiction. So that, those, those cases could be of interest to our U.S. colleagues. Um, we've also got uh, Quebec, which is a civil law jurisdiction and sometimes takes a different perspective on some of these cases. So I think the cases that transcend kind of the specific legislative regime may be of interest to U.S. readers. Um, oh. You know, policy discussions, um, those sorts of things, jurisdiction issues, bias issues, those sorts of things, I think, have um, more, more broad application. And there may be things in, among your readership that will be of interest. Oh, yeah, I definitely. And I think the comparative aspect is absolutely important to look at. Um, and more and more is becoming incredibly um, important, especially when we think about international arbitration. Um, and of course, there's a ton of arbitration <laughs> happening between US and Canadian yes. um, individuals, right? Yes. So, you know, when this whole thing started, and, and you know, I completely understand why you were excited to take it over um, for Justice Urbis because of its traction and background. But how do you really kind of get to the kernel or nutshell of the purpose? Because it's a lot of work, um, but it seems to be a labor of love. So maybe you want to speak a little more to really the underlying purpose of putting this together. Yeah, I mean, when when Justice Urbis did it, he 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 did it alone, and and I just saw something which told me that he released over 180 case summaries in 2020. So he was living and breathing this, and when he approached me to do it, he said, "You might need some help." And I thought to myself, "Oh yes, I do," <laughs> uh, which is why, at his suggestion, and I think it was a good one, I. I brought in some some younger very experienced um, arbitration counsel and arbiters to to arbitrators to contribute and I think we all I, I said to everybody I think that Justice Urbis's vision is the right one I think the formula is a winning one I think that we should carry it on and I had a very enthusiastic response because all of the people I approached are also uh, avid readers um, and I guess I view the purpose as, as there, there are there are multiple purposes. I mean, again, giving delivering information to people in a, in a way that's very easy to read and digest. We all welcome that because we, you know, I consider attorneys, uh, arbitrators, lifelong learners. We want to be up to date on cases in our field, interesting issues and trends. And so one of the things that Justice Service did, and which I intend to continue doing, is his annual review. And so he takes um, a look at all of the cases over the years and identifies what were the key ones. Sometimes they're not apparent until later, which have turned out to be the key cases. And then sometimes you can see some trends, which kind of issues are really troubling the courts right now or challenging the courts right now, that sort of thing. So that gets posted on the website. And I think that's a great resource for people if they kind of want to get a sense of what's going on in both domestic and commercial um, international arbitration, depending upon what your, your strength is. But I think there's also an educational purpose. Um, those of us who have practiced in the courts and who are immersed in arbitration know that there are certain concepts um, that are very, that, that are, are ascent, we're, we're steeped in them. They're very well entrenched. And people who don't do arbitrations on a regular basis sometimes don't appreciate some of those concepts. And so, so in my view, it's useful to, to circulate these cases to show so there's a great resource for people who are perhaps counsel on, on an arbitration case and that's not the work they normally do get a sense of what kinds of issues are out there and how how courts and counsel are dealing with them and, and let's face it when we when we wonder about the approach a court has taken on a lot of these issues many times it's because counsel haven't pointed them in the right direction and so educating mm -hmm. counsel I think is absolutely critical to making sure that the court results that we're all looking for um, are achieved. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and not to mention, of course, the benefits to um, students, professors, others who absolutely would benefit from that educational piece. Yeah, and we've the, the website is searchable. 
So if you know about a case, it's easy to find it, but you can also search by subject matter. And, and I think that's of use. Right now, there are, are about 514 case summaries on there, which is a tremendous treasure trove. And of course, we're going to be keeping the, 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 the content that Justice Urbis contributed before he was appointed to the bench uh, last month. And, and I, I haven't said that the reason he turned this over to me is because he's now been elevated to the Quebec Superior Court, for which uh, many people have congratulated him because he's got a wide network and probably some of your readers even know him well. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> and so that was a labor of love for him, which he wanted to continue. And we've, of course, left all his content on the website and that's available for readers to, to pour through. Well, I personally thank you. I think it is. It is a treasure trove um, and just a huge contribution to the field. So thank you for that. And thank you for partnering with Arbitrate.com and being part of arbitration and really sort of diving right in, which is um, so true of both of our websites. So Lisa, thank you. Thank you for taking time. It's always good to talk to a friend to the North. And um, I appreciate it very much. Thanks, Amy. I've enjoyed it.